Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to derive the ideal rocket equation. The ideal here means that there is no external force to our rocket fuel system. And in my previous video, I derived the general formula, which you can access from the cards right now. The general formula is F external is equal to, and by external force, I mean a force like gravity. This is not, a, let's say, the thrust force that is created by the rocket. No, that would be an internal force to the system. When I say external, I mean a force like the gravity of a nearby planet, okay? This is equal to, as I proved in my last video, mass, the mass of our rocket, dv dt, the change in its velocity, and this is a v, plus, uh, plus u, and this is the speed that the fuel is coming out of our rocket, the relative speed, actually. Then we have dm dt, which would be the change of mass of our rocket. Now, this is the general formula. We need to solve this for our case. And how are we going to solve it? Since we are interested in the ideal case, we are going to set f external to, uh, to zero. This will be zero. This means there is no external force. So let's say that our rocket is not being influenced, influenced by any gravitational force. There isn't nearby planets. We can neglect their influence. This would give us, if we subtract, and also, okay, let me do it anyways. So if we subtract this part, for example, from both sides, we will have negative m dv by dt is equal to u dm by dt. And my bad, put the arrow on top of u, it is a velocity. Here I can neglect the, the dt's, it doesn't matter, since we have... Uh, time derivatives on both sides. This means the thing that we take the derivative of should be equal, so we can neglect the derivatives, dt's, I mean. You can even think of it as simplifying, but it isn't really simplifying. So we neglected the dt's, and if I now divide both sides by a negative m, this factor, if I do that, I am going to have uh, dv is equal to negative u divided by m times dm. Now, we have two differentials on both sides. This means we need to take, a, we need to take an integral. Now, let's take the integral. Let's set our boundaries like this. Where, where should we start for the velocity? We should have an initial velocity, v naught. And we will be interested in the final velocity at, uh, after some time interval. So it is called Vf. And actually Vf is what we are trying to find. I mean, when you have a rocket, you are probably interested in its speed after burning some amount of mass. Some amount of fuel, actually. So after losing some amount of mass. So Vf is in fact what we are trying to solve for, the final velocity. And on the right, we're going to start from an initial mass, m naught and go up to a final mass, mf. So the left part is easy. We're just going to, this derivative of dv is just going to give us v. And when we plug in our boundaries, we're only going to get vf minus v naught. So this is the change in velocity. And let's see what the change in velocity is. On the right, we can take the negative u out of the integral sign because it is a constant and we are able to take constants outside of the derivative. I mean, outside of the integral, also outside of the derivative. But here we have an integral and we can take it out. It is like uh, how we can do it in sigma notation. It is just an addition. So we can take it out of the derivative. And now we have from m naught to mf dm over m. So we have uh, this derivative, uh, this integral. Why do I keep saying derivative? And how can we find this derivative? Well, uh, this is kind of asking what function has a derivative 1 over x. I'm thinking of x and y, conventional usage of variables. And that function would be ln of x. So this should give us ln, 
this should give us a natural logarithm function since derivative and integral are opposite uh, opposite opposite what do you call it opposite operations of one another we have negative u and now we're going to have ln m then from that kind of reasoning this will be evaluated at our boundaries so we will have mf the final mass minus ln m not the initial mass and this is very important that it is inside parentheses inside brackets so th that's why we will distribute this negative if we don't put the parentheses then we make a mistake so if i solve this equation for v final which is as i said what we want to do v final is equal to v naught the initial velocity plus the change in velocity and we just found the change in velocity it is going to be we're going to distribute this u and let's do it here so that we will substitute it this part is going to give us if we distribute the u the negative i mean we will have ln m naught minus the final velocity and the final mass i mean and it is a property of logarithms that if you have the same base and subtraction you can express it in one logarithm as division so this is going to be ln m naught divided by the final mass like this so we now substitute this we have u and then ln initial mass divided by final mass and my friends this is the formula for the ideal rocket this is the formula where our rocket is not being influenced by any force and i want to highlight a very important thing here notice that the final velocity is independent of how fast we burn the fuel i mean can you see any time term here no there is no time term so this final velocity's value doesn't change uh, by our process of burning the fuel if we start from the same mass and end at the same mass then two different processes would give us the same change in velocity if we have an external force you will see that this is not the case the time does matter and in that case you want to be able to uh, propel rocket as quickly as possible and actually i'm going to derive a formula for that in hopefully in a previous video anyways this was it for this video if you have any questions please write them in the comment section i hope to see you in another video until then take care